Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. All right, folks, today, welcome to Miami Dice, first of all. Secondly, <laughs> we're taking a look at Trains and Stations. Now, this game is actually not out yet. It's coming out late September, around Essen time, uh, in the, which is a big fair in Germany. So this is a, kind of a preview, but we're going to review it anyway and tell you what we think of it, because we played the full game now. Trains and Stations is a game by Eric Lang, uh, by WizKids, in which you're rolling dice and using them to build train routes. Now, if I would have told you that before you played the game, what would your thoughts have been? Run away! Really? Probably. Oh, okay. <laughs> this game? Hello. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's see how the game plays, and we'll be right back. Here's the board. Uh, each player is going to get a handful of buildings of their color as well as some dice. These are custom dice. They show different sides. Uh, six sides on each die that shows two dollar symbols on one side, a train with a lock symbol on one side, a train without a lock symbol, and then a cow, a bell, and a coal car. So those are just the dice that you have. Now on a player's turn, they are going to roll these five dice. They are going to look at what they've rolled and they can decide whether to keep it or to re-roll some or all the dice. If they do re-roll, however, they have to pay a coin each time they re-roll, which means if you're out of money, you can no longer re-roll. You can also save dice. Let's say I want to save these two coal cars till next turn, I can do so. And then next turn when it's my turn to roll, I can keep these coal cars where I don't have to re-roll them again. They're just automatically coal cars or I can even choose to re-roll them. Now, there are trains with lock symbols. If you roll them, you can no longer re-roll that die. And you have to be careful because if you roll three trains with lock symbols, then you there is a strike against you and you will lose three victory points and you can no longer do any more re-rolls, period, that turn. Now, what do all the different symbols mean? When you're done with your turn, you will look and see what you have. First of all, if you have money symbols, you'll take two coins for each dollar symbol you have. Now you have a maximum of five, so I mean most of the time you don't want a whole lot of these money symbols, but that will give you money again to be helped in future rerolls. For the other ones, the bell, the cow, and the coal car, you need to roll three of them. If you do so, you can take the matching building for each type and the matching buildings are shown here. You can see that for the bell, you'll build this building. For the coal car, this building. You have buildings that match each of these three types. And you will take one of those buildings and you will build it in any city you want on the board. Each city has a maximum number of buildings that can be built into it. You can see that there's three buildings can be put in New Orleans. And down here in San Antonio, there can be two buildings. However, you may only build one building in each city until all the cities have a building in them. Now, the main thing you'll be doing with your dice is using the trains. Even if they're locked, it doesn't really matter. When you have trains, you can place those trains on the board on any of these spaces as long as the train is next to a city or next to another train. Trains do not have to be next to your own color. In fact, you will likely place trains off the time next to trains that other people have. Now, what players are going to be trying to do here is they're gonna be trying to connect cities. So if somebody placed a train here, you can see that these two cities are now connected. Sometimes on a player's turn, they will set it up so that they will have connected multiple uh, cities between trains. When that happens, there will be some scoring at the end of that round. Now, we've connected three cities with a set of trains. Who Each player that's been involved in this connection is gonna get points for each of those cities. So green, blue, and red are all going to get three points. We'll then see who has the most trains. 
in that route, which in this instance happens to be green. If it was a tie, it would be the player whose turn it is. That person's going to get a bonus for each of the cities. The dice are removed when we're done, by the way. So if, for example, here in Billings, the bonus is simply a victory point. Over here in Seattle, you get to draw a card, and I'll talk about those cards in a second. Los Angeles, two victory points. Down here in San Antonio, if you did this one, you would get a bonus die. There's white bonus dice that will give you an extra die to roll on your next turn, and so that would give you more opportunities to do things. By the way, you always will roll five dice on your turn. So if you have put dice on the board as trains, the, the game comes with extra dice, and now if you run out of dice, well, that's tough luck, but you'll be rolling dice in your turn that way. Now, these buildings that are on the board, whenever you have a building in a city that's part of a scored route, you will take cards that match that building. So for the building for here in San Antonio, for example, I would take these pickaxes. Um, then there's also, I can take the, these uh, steer cards or the coal cards, depending on the buildings that are connected. I'll get one for each building that's in a city that's in a route that scores. I'll take these cards and put them face down in front of me. Now, at the beginning of the game, players are going to get dealt some of these power cards, and you can get more of them I just showed you, If, for example, the bonus from Seattle. These power cards show one of two things. Sometimes they show a specific route, Seattle, New Orleans. If anybody connects those two cities on a turn and scores them, no matter if other cities are involved or not, you can show this card and you will score the points on it, period. So you can try to talk people into scoring the routes you want. Other cards show goods, and these just count, like for example, this counts as two coal cards uh, for the end of the game purposes. So these cards are different things that you will be able to either score for roots or goods. If one of these goods runs out, let's say the coal cards run out, it's then replaced by an upgraded version of goods that are placed there. Players can trade in two for one for the new goods if they want, and then if that one would run out, there's even another more upgraded version that can take its place that players will get as time goes by. The game goes until the victory points run out. And they'll run out fairly quickly, faster than you think, as players will be scoring for different things. When the game is over, players will reveal how many cards they have of each of these types. The player who has the most coal cards, for example, will score the points at the bottom, which happens to be six. The person with the most gold cards will score nine points on the bottom of that. Players total up those points, plus any points they scored here, plus any points they've scored for their routes that they've gotten, that they placed during the course of the game, and whoever has the most points is the winner. Have it, ticket, I mean trains, <laughs> almost a ticket to ride the dice game. It's, you know what though, it's not anything like ticket to ride. I mean, after seeing how it plays, it's more of a, yeah. it's a, a, I would say a minor push your luck game. Mixed yeah. mixed with yeah, it's got a bit of a dice allotment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a bit. To me, it makes me think of uh, King of Tokyo, the train game. You know, <laughs> what? it's yeah. got a little bit of that flavor, that push your luck, because... like very loosely right. based on the Yahtzee idea. Mm -hmm. In this game, you don't have to stop though. After three rolls, right, you can keep paying. If That's what they need to add in King of Tokyo. Pay to keep rolling. Yeah. Okay. Um, I the the components themselves. The the dice are fantastic. Absolutely. Very good. If every person who stopped by to look at the game, both I mean when when we played it in both locations at what we right. played it, came by and said, "Is this Quarriers?" Because yeah. the dice look very similar. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the dice are great. The I think the artwork is good. Although you weren't a big fan of the box cover, you said. I'm just worried. I'm, I I think it's fine. I think it's a good looking cover. I just my fear is that this cover does not match how light the game within it is, hmm. and I'm afraid it's going to people are going to feel, feel misled. That was my fear. Yeah, kind of like there's there's more to it than actually is there based on the cover alone. Yeah, it just looks like a heavier, more serious game. It's a fairly yeah. light, quick playing game. Yeah, it is. Yeah, even with the full complement of players. Mm -hmm. uh, my only quibble with components is I think that I love the different colors they have. They look really cool. But I think that it's often easy for me to forget which building does what. Hmm. There's little tiny icons on the board that remind you, but they're tiny and they often have cards covering up. I, connect, I remember the coal piles give me coal. Right. But I can never remember which one gives me steer and which one gives me um, well, the ranch, mining. The ranch houses give you. Yeah, but I can never remember which one's the ranch. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> They're very tiny pieces, also. Right. Yeah, but that that kind of leads into my quibble about it. Um, I, I enjoyed the game immensely. It was a great game. Uh, I actually asked to play it 
um, at, at the last gaming event that we went to. Um, my main my main quill is I think the board should be bigger. Um, usually I'm the one that doesn't say that. If if you don't need a board, don't use mm -hmm. the board. But in this case, they have a board. It's a functional board, but it's a little too small. If they would have just made it a little bigger, some of those quibbles that you're talking about, the smaller icons and all that kind of stuff, oh, that yeah, go I away because everything's larger. But, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's the size of the dice with the H... With the I guess so, I guess so. I'm right there with you, though. The, the iconography could be somewhat better. I mean, the buildings are minuscule, mm -hmm. the little buildings you put out. Right. The iconography on the cards, yes, you think about it and it matches the building, but it, they don't match one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. Why not? That could help. All right, well, this is all for me, <clears throat> minor quibbles, because right. I really enjoy this game. This hits a really good spot for me in the fact that it is a light train game, of which it seems are very few. Ticket mm -hmm. to Ride, Transamerica, what else? All the rest of train games are fairly heavy. Yes. But, but I also felt like it gave some pretty good choices. I can concentrate on buildings mm -hmm. and get the different goods cards, mm -hmm. or I can concentrate on building routes. Mm -hmm. But every time you build a route, you have to think, who else am I helping? give points to and am I accidentally if this if I'm not building a route that helps me there's a good chance I'm building one that helps someone else right. you know so and sometimes it's better not to finish your route for that reason and then there's the opposite thing whenever you're putting a dice out there you're kind of pushing your luck because you're putting it out there because you want to finish this particular route but somebody could use your dice to finish a different route that doesn't help you at all so there's kind of that push your luck aspect. I've never seen a game actually do that before. Where it, it you happened put, to me like two or three times. Right, where you, you're putting stuff out and it's wiped from the board because of something someone else did. Right. Mm -hmm. That was a neat... Yeah, to me, it was a, 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 a neat thing. And also, there's a, not a ton. Don't, don't come into this with the idea that it's a negotiation game. But there is a little... I can say, hey, you should put your dice here. Try to talk people into putting dice where it will benefit you and not benefit others. I, I see that in this game more than, so than other Euro-style games. I think that's a very slight thing. I didn't really yeah. get that feel. Um, I pulled it off a lot. Well, you, you, pulled it off, you pulled it off with me there at the end of that last game just because it actually was the best deal for me. Well, right. It helped you, too. But it was. Oh, it well, not, I wasn't done about that one, but there was somewhere I managed to talk someone into doing, finishing one of my routes. But also that idea of mm. putting your stuff where you think people will finish routes. Yeah. I think there's some strategy in that. Well, yes, yes. You can, instead of focusing on completing something yourself, just spread thin and let other people give you some points. You still get points, yeah. With all that being said, <clears throat> even though there's a lot of choices, the game plays very quickly. Yes, yeah. very long. Even with the full five players that ever sat there and thought, Oh, when is my turn coming around? You know, there's only, yeah. and besides, you might score on everyone else's turn. Right. You never know. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I would almost say that it's, I mean, I'm, I'm careful when I say this, but I, it's almost too short in some aspects mm -hmm. because it almost feels like sometimes the game stops right as it started getting, getting going, mm -hmm. you know, or right as it got started, it stopped. Um, well, I guess you could always play to more points if you wanted to. Yeah. You know, there, there's so, you know different ways that you could do things. You know, I mean, some of those, some of those secondary, some of those secondary uh, resources sometimes don't come into don't play. even come yeah. into play. Um, well, that's true, but ends. but see, we haven't we haven't. What, let's say we played with ten more points each. It's very possible that the game could just ramp up too much. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, mm -hmm. we run out of all the special cards. We run out of everything else. Yeah. Who knows? Well, I'll never complain about a game. I mean. Yeah. I would much rather complain about a game being too short than being too long. Yeah. Oh yes, it's, it's it's a it's a minor complaint for me. I'm not saying that. It's just that it, it that's just the feel that it gave me. Yeah, is I think that, my biggest red flag for everybody out there is make sure you go into the game knowing it's a very light, light yeah. dice game, mm -hmm. but fun one. It's yes, very fun. I really like the game, but very light. This is not a heavy train game. Mm -mm. All right. So my final opinion on this one is it's a game that I'm actually going to keep. I still haven't decided which game it's going to replace yet, but it's one I enjoy uh, tremendously. I'm giving this one two piles of coal up uh, with a few extra pieces of coal thrown in. Um, so I can give it to all my kids for Christmas. Um, <laughs> no, but I, I like it a lot. <laughs> Better ramp up I, attitude. I, I, I like it a v very much. It hits a really good sweet spot for me, being a shorter game, <clears throat> but still offering a lot of choices. I'm going to give it two horns up. 
Steers. Get it? I get it. <laughs> oh, I thought we were doing some kind of rock. Okay. Steers. Oh, man. Hook them horns. All right. Texas Longhorns. Anyway. Yeah. I'm a... I am, mean, but I'm a roll tie fan. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I grew up doing this. So I'll How do we this. get into football? I don't know, and I really like it too. And I'm gonna give it two stolen warrior dice up. Oh, very nicely done. Um, yeah, it's a great game. I think we're we're all in agreement here. Great, great game. Go out and get one in September, y'all. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>